there's so many elements in this labyrinth dungeon that reminds me of an RPG. Aloha, everybody. I'm Lehua, and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a Hawaii variety content creator and host a podcast across worlds, Hawaii's number one podcast for anime and manga. In this video, we are going to do a recap slash review of that time I got reincarnated as a slime, season three, episode 62, Labyrinth and Storm Dragon. The entire episode takes place within the bustling nation of Tempest. We see the arena nearing completion, hinting at epic battles and exciting events to come but the real star of the show is the labyrinth rimuru's been dreaming up this massive dungeon serves a dual purpose one economic engine imagine adventurers flocking to tempest eager to conquer the labyrinth and snag some sweet loot courtesy of kurobe's impressive new weapons and prototypes Entry fees and potential treasure drops could significantly boost the Tempest's economy and then two, entertainment hub. The labyrinth isn't just about profit, it's about fun! The arena provides a stage for adventurers and monsters alike to test their skills, offering entertainment for both participants and spectators. I think of it as a monster-filled amusement park with a chance of getting pummeled. This episode throws out some subtle symbolism also that adds depth to the story. We got Kurebe's craftsmanship. Remember Rimuru's low blacksmith? Well, Kurobe's become a master of his craft. His ability to create powerful weapons becomes... A reflection of Tempest's overall growth. It shows how far they've come from a simple slime dwelling in the cave. Now, their rocking top notch weaponry, symbolizing their rise to power. Kurobe can make rare and legendary grade weapons. So, even his prototypes that he doesn't really you know, give out, sell to people. They're just lying there, but they're such great qualities. So they'll be perfect for the Labyrinth Dungeon because, you know, it's like free loot for the adventurers and they're not going to get wasted. And they're also going to be added as like an incentive and they're going to totally be used like marketing because people are going to be boasting about it that look i got this from the labyrinth dungeon and they're actually prototypes oh my gosh it's amazing nothing gets wasted and then we got veldora's confinement with a twist let's face it veldora's a walking natural disaster he's literally nature energy natural energy so placing him in the labyrinth's deepest floor seems like a recipe for chaos, right? However, there is a deeper meaning here. Think of it as controlled power. The labyrinth allows Odora to unleash his immense aura without causing widespread destruction. It's like putting a cork on a champagne bottle. The excitement is contained, but the potential for fun remains. So... They actually dive deeper into this. So let me just show you here. Oh my gosh. I totally forgot to do this part. <clears throat> so Rimuru feels bad for Fedora, right? However, he needs to make use of Fedora, right? And so Veldora is literally containing his aura just so he can walk amongst everybody else. Because if he unleashes it, he scares everybody or they can't move. They're just so still. They can't, you know, no one can handle Veldora's aura. That's just, that's why he's like a natural walking disaster. And so he's literally containing that. He's consciously holding in his aura that must be so stressful for him that's probably why he's always reading manga because he's always thinking about that and reading manga like relaxes him <laughs> or like he's so conscious of what he's doing he can't do anything else 
And so with allowing him to be the final boss, the last boss to reach the hundredth floor, Vildora can totally hundred percent release his aura. And this part where they showed him doing that, like they tested it out, it literally looked like someone taking off their bra and letting like everything loose. They're just like, ah, release. <laughs> I'm free. I'm shedding this off. <laughs> and then Vildura's literally like shedding off his human form and becoming this like expanded dragon. He looked so relaxed. He was like, he had like little tears. He's like, oh, finally, oh, I'm free. And yeah. And then we got Ramus's creation. Our favorite playful spirit steps up with a clever inter invention, a bracelet that teleports defeated adventurers back to the beginning of the labyrinth. This injects a sense of fairness into the whole thing. No permanent harm for those who get a little overzealous. This is totally like an RPG game. And coincidentally, next month in August, they're going to release that time I got reincarnated as a slime Isekai Chronicles RPG. They're Tensura's first RPG. We got the mobile game Isekai Memories, and now we're going to get the RPG that's going to be available on all systems Isekai Chronicles. There's so many elements in this Labyrinth Dungeon that reminds me of an RPG. They not only are going to have different levels up to 100, they're going to have loot, they're going to have treasure loot, and they're also going to let people die in the labyrinth. However, they're going to be brought back to the beginning of the labyrinth. That's so cool. And then they also have this element where although people can bring their friends to floors, if the people cannot defeat the enemies, the Majin, on that floor, they can't save there. Yeah, there's saving points, y'all. There's going to be saving points. Totally like RPG. Rimuru, we know where you got your imagination from. Your resources from. Mm-hmm. We know where you got your ideas. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mr. Reincarnated Otherworlder. <laughs> then we got some themes, collaboration, and unexpected help. This episode is all about teamwork let me tell you about the pairs we got rumuru and ramaris their playful bickering masks a strong partnership ramaris's ability to teleport entire structures proves invaluable in creating the labyrinth and rumuru's leadership keeps the project on track together they're building something truly spectacular and i mentioned this in my reaction which is available on patreon I pointed out that Ramus has so much power, so much potential that we didn't see before. And we didn't realize it because, you know, she kind of downplays a lot of her stuff, it seems like it. And I don't know, it's because of her past, what's happened, not too sure. But however, it's interesting that she has all this power and yet she doesn't have that many subjects like yeah she she's got her spirits but literally she got the dryads as her subjects and they kind of like drifted away from her because of ramus's cycle thing and so it makes me wonder why didn't ramus have a larger territory i mean if she could do this she could literally make a whole world in a labyrinth she could make multiple levels she doesn't need literal physical land. She could just make that herself. And then she could expand her subjects, her citizens. They could all have been plotted in there. I mean, we saw that with the refugees. It just makes me wonder, like, why did that not happen? Maybe it's because she didn't have the ambition. 
Maybe it's because she just had her own system with spirits. Not too sure. However, with Rimuru, his leadership, he totally gave her a direction. And we saw a whole new facet, actually many facets of Ramorous. And I love this episode for that. Actually, this whole arc is doing that, so I can't wait to see more. Then we got the other teamwork, which is Rimuru and Vildoro. Sure, they're mostly focused on entertainment here, but there's an underlying trust in their relationship. Rimuru wouldn't put Vildora in charge of such a crucial project. Like, he is going to be the ruler of the Labyrinth Dungeon. So yeah, Ramrus is the manager, but however, Vildora is going to be the ruler of the dungeon. So if he didn't believe in Vildora's ability to handle it, like, I, yeah, this is a lot of trust. It's a testament to their bond, even if it involves a healthy dose of don't break anything for Rimuru. And then we got Malin's chaotic twist in this and some foreshadows. So just when we think things can't get any more exciting, bam! Malin bursts onto the scene. Her unexpected arrival adds a dash of chaos to the mix. Malim's involvement in creating terrain effects for the labyrinth promises some truly outrageous obstacles for adventurers to face. Okay, I need to clarify. It's supposed to be dragons. She said she's going to bring in dragons to bring in terrain effects. So it's going to be like lava, volcano, volcanic lava stuff, frozen areas, so Iceland literally frozen and then we got like thunder lightning and the reason for this is because Ramers can't do that she can't do elements and i mentioned this in my reaction that a lot of the aspects in the labyrinth dungeon reminded me of tsukimichi because makoto had his demi plane where he was putting all the demi humans there and so the way i saw the labyrinth dungeon it reminded me of tsukimichi where we have this whole other world being made. So many things could be put in there. Living organisms, structures, and it kept growing and growing. And then in Tsukimichi, Makoto's problem was as he was opening gates, it was causing some seasonal dysfunction, malfunction in the demiplane. While Ramorous, she cannot do that. So that's where Meline comes in. Remember, we want to add some natural uh, challenges to these adventures. I think he's also bringing this into, you know, from his other RPG games that he's played. <laughs> but anyways, we got Meline involved. So will it be a mudslide of laughter or a fiery pit of despair? Only, only Malim will know. But Malim's appearance for, also foreshadows some potential challenges. We got unpredictable terrain. While Malim's creativity is boundless, her chaotic nature might make the labyrinth unbalanced or even dangerous for adventurers. Rumuru will likely need to carefully manage her contributions. And then we got international tensions. Malim's connection to other demon lords could raise eyebrows among nations attending the festival. Her presence might be a point of contention or even the catalyst of, for conflict. So what can we expect next? With the foreshadows in mind, here are some questions for the future. How will adventurers react to the labyrinth's challenges, especially with Malim's unpredictable terrain effects? What kind of traps and obstacles will Malim cook up with her chaotic powers? We'll find out. Now, the other thing I want to point out is Veldora's involvement. So... He is unleashing his aura, his magic kills. It's literally going to be powering up the labyrinth, which is going to be great because Veldora has like limitless magic kills. <laughs> and then we got, I think, er, well, Rimuru. He's thinking about the future, about mining 
magicors. Yeah, so they're thinking, okay, once the magic is crystallized, we can mine the ores. That way we don't have to import it. And then we can just export it and we can, you know, build the economy more. It's like, y'all, you're just thinking ahead. And then I want to also point out this cute part with Beretta because she's still under Rimuru and Beretta wants to be under Ramirez. So this thing was so cute. I think it was cute. Where Rimuru, he pulls up the contract, he erases his name, transfers it to Ramirez, and then Ramirez writes her name on it. It's like she put her magic signature. And that wasn't even the best part. And then Ramirez says, oh, now I'm going to have someone with me forever. And then Trini's like, oh, don't forget about me. And then Ramirez says, oh, now I have a big family. It was like, oh, she's always wanted this. Which also brings back to my question of why didn't she do that before? She has the power. She has the potential. What happened? What's going on? And so it just makes me want to know her more. Because it seems like Ramirez felt lonely. <laughs> She's always wanted this. And I'm really excited for her. I'm really excited for this. I can't wait to see more. I can't wait to see more of the festival being made. I can't wait to see more of this labyrinth dungeon. I'm super excited for the future. I can't wait to see the overlapping with the mobile game Isekai Memories and the RPG game Isekai Chronicles. And it just seems like a lot of this is just timed really well because there's like so many similarities. So many things are like matching up. I'm like, I'm, I'm stoked, yo. And that's our review of That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime Season 3, Episode 62, Labyrinth and Storm Dragon. What did you guys think about this video? What do you think about the episode? Let me know in the comments below. And if you want to see more, we also host podcasts across worlds where we talk about anime and manga and we also interview people in the anime industry so if you're interested in that link to the podcast will be in the description we're available on all platforms other than that my name is laihua and this is the super fina channel reviewing recapping that time i got reincarnated as a slime season 3 episode 62 hope you guys like this video and we'll see you on the next one ahoy ho